Hello viewers and welcome to my Grand Prix F1 2011 Abu Dhabi a uh, 50% race and now we'll cut across to my race commentary uh, apologies for some of the audio problems within this video we'll get that sorted away from the line then round turn one making it through into first place that was critical actually from fifth on the grid it's easy when you're in fourth place but when you're in fifth you do need to be late on the brakes but very conscious of the fuel weight and all the rest of it so it's very tentative around these first few corners in fact it is amazing actually how uh, the car changes as the weight comes down on it so cleanly around the first few corners then taking it nice and easy changing my fuel map here to lean no running out of fuel today and I'm comfortable down this straight I'm always aware of where the other cars are I use a little bit of curves there but I'm aware of the second section I brake and uh, whoa obviously the fuel weight there I wasn't expecting it to be to affect me quite so much on that first corner but it's the first time you're braking heavily so after that uh, I now know to brake a few yards earlier at this stage of the race thankfully I was on the option tyre at the time so braking there I've got a braking point sorted out now that's fine keeping it nice and tentative while I see how the car handles over these next few corners very gentle see that curve it kind of hooked the wheel in there that curve is a bit dodgy actually it can spin you out sometimes again here we'll go through actually the, the, the sort of my my personal experience at the second gear and then up to third and down to second here you could be more aggressive on the throttle than I'm being I'm already in a mode though where I'd like to save fuel and protect my tires and I've learned better now how to be very progressive and very smooth it does cost lap time but bearing in mind I have track position at the moment uh, I'm saving fuel so this is lining me up for the rest of the race so you can see the field there I'm not necessarily able to pull away I won't be able to pull away obviously it's on legend AI uh, the setup I didn't get didn't have time to do a setup for the car uh, it's just running a uh, a quick setup uh, the one one furthest from the from the dry so basically what it means is I have a very low downforce which means I'm down the straights I'm very comfortable it's, it's very difficult for cars to overtake but in the slow and twisty bits I'm uh, struggling quite a bit for, for grip and uh, cornering speed so I will be slightly slower during the twisty sections just looking at the replay here you'll see a bit of action behind me is it this lap? No, no. Everybody's made it safely through so far. There will be a bit of action there at some point, no doubt about it. So, keeping it nice and consistent for these first few laps. Abu Dhabi, it's a nice circuit, isn't it? I mean, it's a nice layout and everything, but it hasn't really done anything in the way of racing. The DRS helped this year. Obviously, last year it was impossible to overtake. You know, 2010, we had Alonso stuck behind Petrov, find, able, not able to find a way past. Uh, at least this year, you know, DRS has kind of helped that somewhat and it's given opportunities. And, uh, you know, I mean, depending on how long the DRS zone is, depends on whether those opportunities are uh, earned in the right way and whether, that, whether you can defend your position. I think often it's, you know, when you can't defend your position at all and a car just flies past, it just feels artificial essentially. But uh, with a nice bit of balance, so that there's still commitment needed by both drivers. So getting into a flow, uh, these first few laps are probably the most difficult because you, you do have a lot of fuel on the car. Uh, your lap times are not going to be where you'd like them to be, but obviously on the option tyre at the moment. I prefer to save the prime tyre, which is awful by the way, uh, for, for the as late in the race as possible. That, that's the way to run it. In fact, you know, try to run as much as you can on the option until the options are literally falling apart and you're ice skating before going to the prime. So you can get the prime. Uh, oh, I was looking for the back button there. I couldn't remember what button it was, so I just ended up changing views. Uh, forgot what I was doing for a moment, and suddenly the red ball there of Weber. I'm thinking, no, I've got the inside. I make my apex nicely. And you see in the bottom corner there, a bit of action there. A couple of cars in a spin. So that slowed everybody down behind me. It's giving me a bit of a lead now. So just what I needed for my uh, strategy now, uh, saving fuel, I've got a nice gap and it's given me a nice sort of cushion now to build for a good race strategy. So the cars are now five second gap behind me as you could hear, so five seconds and I want to maintain that five second gap now for as long as I can. 
uh, at least until the pit stops you know just keep maintaining that gap and uh, hopefully fingers crossed everything will work out of course we're still early days at the moment it's still daylight obviously that will fade as the race goes on I do like some of the effects which we'll, we'll look at later I find though the track requires quite a lot of concentration uh, I'll just take you around a bit of what I do here I brake just before the sign here so braking and then down into third even second sometimes there I was a bit late with my braking there as it happened I was actually concentrating on the crash that just happened and thinking hang on where is everybody obviously not knowing uh, what had happened behind me so I lost a bit of concentration there and then braking after this sign takes me down through the gears I don't want to attack the curbs too hard because they can unbalance the car. So every time you go over a curb, you want to just gently accelerate. Don't put your foot down, otherwise you could just spin out at any time. You know, these curbs on this low downfall setup, it, it doesn't suit it doesn't suit the curbs uh, when you have this low downfall sort of stiffness. So now I think while I'm in the lead, uh, I just want to maintain consistency. Uh, I've got a really good opportunity to win. Now I. In making this video, I ran this Grand Prix uh, four times. Four times. I did uh, one which was a full lap race distance, a uh, 42 lap race. Uh, sorry, I got to lap 42 when my TV decided to uh, go into standby mode for whatever reason. Whatever. Um, that sent me into a barrier after 42 laps. That's without the five or six practice laps. I then started the race again got to somewhere like lap 18, came out the pits and uh, I had an inexplicable loss of grip once it gave me player control. The instant it gave me player control, the, the car was just spinning off. Um, I then ran a 28 lap race, which was 50% race distance, and my camcorder malfunctioned, uh, so I lost that. And so then after doing that, uh, I then started this race. So bear in mind that at this stage, I've probably done about 80, 85 laps. I've already done one and a half Grand Prix worth uh, before starting this race. So I know how to drive the circuit consistently. I can go all day on it now. Uh, it's just uh, unfortunate that this particular race is nowhere near as exciting as the other races. The other races I was down, I was battling with people all the way. Uh, whereas on this race, obviously, I've made it into the lead and the cars behind me have had a little bit of a tangle. Surprised it didn't bring out a safety car, but I think everybody gets up and running again. So, perfect opportunity now. The five second gap is, is stable now. I'm able to, uh, the Legend AI on this circuit with my setup, I'm able to maintain this gap on the option. So, right, that's good. Uh, I'm still on low fuel, maintaining that gap, low fuel running. So, I know when I go from this, I'll go to standard fuel running, and you'll see that later on once I'm actually preparing for the pit stop. It shows really how much concentration there is for the drivers through the race. Uh, occasionally, like a lap like here, you'll see me, I've not used all my curves. Sometimes, uh, lots of reasons for that. Sometimes I, uh, I'm wary of what's happening behind me and wanting to save a bit of curves. Sometimes I'm aware that if I make a mistake, it's always handy to have a bit of curves to fall back on. Um, and sometimes I simply am thinking about other things, you know, like say such as the fuel or pit stop stuff or whatever that I need to sort out because you do forget these things uh, and so then just looking at the map in the bottom corner and seeing my, my gap and how I'm maintaining it so coming around what lap are we on now lap 6 now of 28 epic racing as I say by the end of this i had done uh, somewhere in the region of uh, I don't know 105, 106 laps just in yesterday's racing on this uh, and then it's taken five hours to process the first part of this video and will take three hours to process the next and four hours to upload online so it gives you guys an idea of how long it actually takes to make these videos which is why this one was a little bit late going up uh, regarding the Brazil Grand Prix obviously doing again I, I'm, I'll look to do dynamic weather on that one as well I've, I've got a hang of Brazil as you may have seen on an earlier video so if, once we takes then it's just a case of right let's see uh, let's add some difficulty let's add the weather to
uh, a long time uh, and if I crash on two laps from the end then you're gonna have a race a crash two laps from the end because it, it, it does take a lot of concentration and you think God knows you know the guys are so physically fit that are in these things racing around you know with all that g-force and everything to calculate what they do I'm saying that though it's relative isn't it I mean I've just ignored the pits there by the way and this is where I'm talking about tyre strategy I'm not pushing quite as hard as I could I could be more aggressive but I'm trying to keep the car smooth Jensen style um, to just minimize the time that I have to be on the prime tire towards the end of the race and as I've got a gap pegged I am actually a little bit slower this lap because I can feel that the tires are actually going and it just takes a second of making a mistake hitting a curb for the car to uh, spin out towards the end of the race is what I've got to look towards now so making a mistake there this is where my tyres are wearing now quite heavily you may have already seen the sensor there the tyres are yellow but they are wearing quite a lot and there is a lot of room for error because there's also still a lot of fuel on the car so there's that weight there as well so this lap I will pit now I can feel you can see a few mistakes there where I've gone a little bit deep into the corner and I can feel now and ooh, yeah the tyres are definitely feeling like they're wearing out a bit so this is the most sort of difficult time really it's just when you're on this limit now where you can feel your tyres are really going they're just not giving you the grip anymore and you're trying to push but pushing is, is essentially tiptoeing at the same time just to get the car around and at least say right I've done this extra lap on this set of tyres and it reduces the pressure on the next set so rounds into the pits then let's take over tyres going on so I signalled earlier on which I've missed it actually by talking for option tyres to be put on the car and I've altered my engine now to uh, standard fuel as well it's a shame you can't control the car on this exit of the pits. I do think that's something that next year I'd like to see is a bit of control on the pit exit. Because you do on other tracks, you know, if you're in Brazil you have to drive it down the snaking exit. It'll be good here as well because it is so technical and tricky. So remembering now then, uh, new tyres, uh, braking early, coasting into corners. You know, uh, it's going to take at least a lap to get them properly up to temperature. I'm aware of that, so I'm... I'm gonna, I'd rather just lose a second in getting my tyres up to temperature. No, I've got it. Which is a shame, you know, because you think the cars would be a little bit closer with all these straights from the DRS system now but it just shows the disparity in performance between them on certain circuits and that all depends on the technicality of the circuit as well here I'm looking at the well I, I turn in early the car always understeers on that corner and here now I'm full speed through here and then full speed with a shift down there so I'm, I'm shifting down through the corner and down to first for me so that hooks it in up into second and up into third sometimes here I won't manage it here because I want a bit wide and then gently on the power there as well those last two are very progressive corners I take two shifts down here and then down into second for me here works well getting it in there nice and early and it takes you around the end of the lap so that's a really consistent flow and this is where if you don't use manual gears manual gears can help a lot because you break two shifts down or whatever two shifts up and it gets you into a rhythm for each corner and then you adapt yourself to that corner the tyres are changing, the weight's changing and stuff like that I've been advised actually to have a drink so I will now because during these commentaries I don't normally have a drink at all I'm often talking in front of the camera to myself for several hours so nice lead now you know, this is uh, kind of what it must have been like for Sebastian Vettel most of the season, really. You know, it's just out there on his own. It's all a bit boring, really, isn't it? And then, really, for me, at the moment, it's not boring at all while I'm actually driving. I'm just 
thinking about the next corner and you know optimizing what I can do within the, the confines of trying not to make mistakes because there is a lot of room for error constantly and I'm just trying to hit my apexes lap after lap this is not a circuit that I'm comfortable with at all. Uh, I'm much, much, much more comfortable with circuits such as Brazil, the next one you'll see. Uh, this is a circuit that I've essentially needed to learn just to make this video. I thought I've got to learn how to do this circuit. It's not one I've ever been any good at. But saying that, I learned India the other day. Uh, if I ran it again, I'd simply get better and better at it. You know, if, you know all the time, you know, practice makes perfect. and. And then once you're comfortable with it, then you start to get quicker and quicker and find new limits and stuff like that. I mean, it's only actually, it's only by the end of this race that I learned some new techniques for me on acceleration that really improved my pace a little bit as well. But it's, um, it's something that you always practice makes perfect. You know, I did 100 laps of the circuit and then started to find new ways to get better and better at it. You know, that's, that's the way it is. You know, there's a lot of guys at home, there's a lot of you guys watching this that have had this game for a month or so now you've done millions more laps on this game than I have and you know you'll you'll get quicker and quicker at it all the time I think the hard part for me at the moment is obviously we're doing this and then I'm doing a bit of cars and I'm doing a bit of Daytona USA and a bit of WRC and so you don't stay on any one game uh, but so it's nice with this game to you know spend some time on it and really sort of improving we deep into that corner then I use quite a bit of curves no, not really, not too much. Just went a little bit deep into the corner, it seems. So I'll be using all the rest of my curves here by the looks of it. That's it. I brake just with the sign going past. The first sign on the outside there is usually my braking gauge. So I gauge where the car is and then where that sign is as to where I should be braking. Because my speed is usually relative coming out the corner. It's pr pr pretty similar every time. Then here, full speed and shift down. There we go. Uh, we're a little bit wide there, but that's okay. We've got it in. It's always tricky braking when you're actually clipping a curb like that because you can spin you out very easily. So you're gentle on the brakes. And then you come out the brake, basically, and just turn the car in and hope for the best. So another lap out of the way. What are we on? Lap 10, going to lap 11 now of 28. And I believe that I'm back in the lead now. I haven't actually seen anyone, of course, and I can't quite tell here because of the light from the screen. We'll find out in just a moment, but I believe I'm back in the lead of the race. So, again, you can see on the little map there, my teammate, uh, I'm maintaining the gap that I had early on. So from that accident, uh, obviously I'm now up to standard fuel, so I'm able to maintain that gap comfortably. So providing I keep doing this to the end of the race, you know, I should be nice and comfortable no problem it does give me a good example though like you say of Lewis's uh, success at the weekend you know and the concentration he needed in in focusing what he has on winning this race and it was a really good result for Lewis actually I was really pleased to see that I, I don't agree with everybody that's old Lewis yet I think you know old Lewis will come there's a body language to the old Lewis you know uh, an exciting driving style that uh, he did a good conservative job at the weekend, a solid job, and that's really good to see. Uh, he, he just needs uh, just needs to get back into swing a bit, you know. He's a, he's no, he is the quickest driver out there. If you give him give him the car and he's on it and everything's working for him, but uh, I, it's funny actually. I look at Jensen and and uh, Lewis very much as Prost and Senna. You know, Senna would be the, the Lewis really. The, the, you know, aggressive with the car, throwing it around the track, whereas Prost would be the uh, the Jensen relentless finisher. Not as quick, but good with his tyres, good with strategy, and relentlessly finishing races. I think Jensen's uh, race at the weekend was was a fantastic result for him. You know, third place with all the problems with the curve. I have to say, great result for him this season. It's a shame he has had those technical problems because I think he could have been up there, and it would have been nice to see someone harassing uh, Sebastian a bit more, but. Saying that, I think things are going to be different next year. You know, we have uh, a lot of potential next year. The guys are always developing. They're always getting more experienced. Uh, Jensen's certainly driving probably the best he has in his career. Uh, I think Lewis will be bouncing back. It'd be good to see. But 
you know it'll also for me be good to see you know the, the Mercedes coming up there you know Michael Schumacher what can he do so many people wrote him off including Formula 1 drivers but in saying that the same people wrote off Jensen Button when he went to McLaren and said that Lewis was going to trounce him in every single race and you just think you know don't you guys watch the results so obviously Jensen's a world champion he's not just going to get trounced uh, he is going to be a relentless finisher and he's taken on some very good race winners in the, and world champions in the past and beaten them uh, so it's, it's good though to see how he's had to raise his game as well in a different way but back to Michael Schumacher for a moment you know he's done well you know Nico Rosberg is an excellent driver and I think Michael and Nico are a great team and if Ross Braun can really sort the car out next year and I believe he can I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with I think that next year's results for Michael really are key to him, whether he stays in the sport. I think if Michael gets some good results next year and the car develops, he may stay in the sport a bit longer. I think if he have a, has a bad season and he doesn't really feel like he's giving anything to the team, then he'll give up. But I, I would prefer to see him there. I, this is new Michael, happy Michael, and a little bit of redemption for him as well, you know. He was the Red Baron of, of Ferrari, you know, and... and However you look at it, he had a better car than anyone else. So, yes, he won several world championships beating nobody. You know, that's, that's the thing. There was nobody with a similar car to race with him. And to an extent, it's been very similar for Sebastian Vettel this year. You know, he's had a car that's put him on pole you know, so many times that can just let him speed away from turn one and he's gone. Uh, but when he was competing, you find that he, he can, you can harass him. You know, Jensen went up to, behind him in Canada and he fell off the road you know and it's very similar to Michael actually Michael would be the same he would push to the limit and the 94 incident with Damon Hill with Damon Hill was harassing Michael corner after corner after corner the fantastic race up until that point and Michael cynically took him out and what was the shame there was that nobody in the sport said that they said oh no Michael made a mistake Michael was turning in for the corner David Coulthard saying that the other day on the BBC it's so frustrating to see David say that when everyone knows he's a racing driver Michael turned in on him and he'd had form and done it in the past but it's great to see him back in the sport now I do see this as a new Michael a racing Michael a Michael who's enjoying his racing and stuff like that you know people who underestimate him say he's slow now really don't understand that so coming in for the pits then and uh we see an error from me here we see a dreadful error from me which is going to cost me quite a bit you see me wave my hand in disgust which you haven't there um, I've got the prime tire on disaster for me disaster so okay so where are we lap 14 of 28 so my next schedule pit stop will be around lap 21 so coming out the pits then, got to be really, so you see the power drop and then I progressively accelerate when I come out the pits. Trying to hold track position here, come on, no, can't do it, can't do it. Better to avoid him, I don't have the grip in the tyres. These tyres are awful. Prime tyres are just, this, they're one second a lap slower. Uh, so this has changed things for me now. Uh, I need to look at changing my where my strategy was to run an extra lap on the options for the first sort of three stops uh, and then really I'd, instead of having to do say eight laps on the prime I'd have to do maybe five now I'm going to have to do at least seven and then see if I can match it little mistake there by Agraswari coming out the corner enabled me to overtake that was a good result so lap 14 of 28, we're at half race distance of course now, on the brakes there and just discovering the grip again, new tyres, discovering the, the grip or lack of on these tyres and it means that every lap is a bit like option tyres that are worn out, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pushing but at the same time I'm not able to you know, really find it any more there and I know it's going to take at least a lap and a half, maybe two laps before they get up to temperature. So I'm aware that they're not there yet. They're going to develop. And these tyres do. They take a while to get to their core where you can find a real consistency. Having said that, it, once they're up to temperature, it is easier to be consistent because they are the harder tyre and they stay at a level. It's just unfortunately they're always a little bit slower. So I'm now in fourth, waiting for the others to pit. 
came in the pit with a reasonable advantage as ever. Not made any mistakes yet. Just uh, put in some consistent laps. And as I say, both pit stops, I've gone a lap longer than they've asked to try and maximise my option tyre life, but to minimise time on these prime tyres. Going straight, using half my curves. I'm mean, braking after the sign or at the sign on these tyres. I'm quite aware these back runners are ahead of me. Always difficult to know what, what to do with these chaps. You know, they are moving about a lot on the circuit. Try not to move too much yourself. You know, you want to be as smooth as possible so they know exactly where you're going to be coming through. This is one here. I'm on the outside. I didn't know quite where he was coming in there. It was a little bit shocking for a moment, but I, got, I held my breath and got through. Not ideal over the kerbs, but keeping it together and again here full speed through this section this is always good for building tyre temperature this section down the gears nice so connecting with the kerbs finding a rhythm on these harder tyres now and gradually pushing a bit harder I'm aware that I've got to try and push on these tyres because they are considerably slower than the option tyre and I'm going to be concerned with losing track position at this rate So, on to lap 16. Good result here from Massa, actually. Looking very strong as well. Well up there. Haven't seen too much of the Red Bulls. We might have lost the Red Bull in that earlier incident. So, for me, it's a case of overtaking back runners and just trying to keep putting in the pace, really. I've not seen anyone. Obviously, there's a big gap between me and the guys that were behind me and then the bigger gap between them and the rest of the field. So I'm aware that I just need to keep on pushing as hard as I can on these tyres and seeing if I can minimise the damage that they're causing me. At the moment though these tyres are at least a second, a second and a half a lap slower than the option. So that's a significant amount of time. And now I've got these two slow guys in front of me and these guys here causing me a lot of problem. Uh, thinking maybe I can get by squeezing through there that was as aggressive as I could trying not to tangle too much again he's trying to slow a bit and it, it, I locked my wheels slightly obviously I've got my ABS turned off so that locked me a little bit the Virgin was so much slower through that section and now I'm just being tentative here I'm thinking I can't find a way past these guys really should pull off a little bit sooner you can see here won't let me through Timo Glock, no good. Ah, oh, terrible behaviour coming through there. Gesticulation there. Furious, furious. Where were the blue flags? No good. That's a drive through penalty for Timo, surely. We'll be discussing that with the stewards later. So that's really cost me there. I mean, I must have lost like two or three seconds just on that. And that, that really was significant to my race today. But nevertheless, continue on. Uh, keep on pushing because there's always going to be the option when I get back onto the option tyres and then I'm going to be quicker than the other cars so they will have to have this pain at some point and I know that I can run 8 laps on the option comfortably so a little bit of marbles there just a, a little bit of frustration maybe creeping in but I was unable to get past them. I know I'm on the wrong tyre for this stage of the race. Now, you can't quite see on this, but the time of day is subtly changing. You will begin to see the sunlight beaming in more and more. It's a nice little effect. You won't see the time of day fully change. You see that the sunlight beaming in now, making visibility more and more difficult in that section. I was thinking about that when I was seeing the drivers at the weekend, actually. I'm thinking about how challenging it must be in the car. I mean, look at that there. That's a really good effect. I'm, I really like the way Codemasters have put that effect in there. You know, I, you know, what can I say? I am really enjoying this game. I mean, this is running on the PS3 here. Obviously, the frame rate's a little bit ropey. Lots of people ask me, actually, why I haven't run the Xbox One. Well, actually, I haven't got the wheel to suit the Xbox One, the, 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 the Fanatic wheel. I just can't get a right setting for it. It doesn't feel right for me at all. 
And what's really strange is that I can't even get the PC version feeling the same. The PS3, Xbox and PC all feel entirely different to me. So there's this one, nice and comfortable with, so I'm sticking with the PC version for now. Sorry, the um, PS3 version for now. I do hope to do a bit more on the PC version very soon. And then I can do direct feed as well. Uh, we don't have the ability to do direct feed on the PS3. So, I'm still in fourth place. I've not seen anybody. Uh, see if we can see any on the map there ahead of me. Sometimes I'm looking at the map myself and I shouldn't be. So it seems like I've certainly lost some time somewhere. But uh, again, you know, I'm aware that, that uh, some of them are going to pit. But we've kind of lost where we are in the race at the moment. And this is what can happen to drivers sometimes, especially when they're overtaken during the pit stops. Uh, you know, I pitted, I came out in fourth, and they were all three to five seconds behind me, so I never saw any of them. And I pitted, uh, and put on a slower tyre, of course, and they have pitted and probably come out in front of me. So that looks to be what the case is. There's a fast car in front of me. I don't know if that's a back runner or the next car up the track. Looks like it could be the next runner up the track. He's gone into the pits now. Let's see if that moves me up a place. It has. I'm up to third place now. Not bad. So Mass is in the pits now. I was looking at the pit map there, which is what sent me off the corner a little bit. Just focusing on that to see what was going on. Because at this point, I was trying to figure out, hang on a minute, I've not made a mistake. Why am I in third place? And why aren't the other guys pitting? Surely they need to pit. Or they'll be losing bags of time. So you can see another car just ahead of me there. That must be the next runner up the road. That's one of the first two. So if I can just keep him pick that gap, I know that when he'll go on to the prime tyre, then I'll be on the option and I should be able to close that gap. slow through that it's always so slow through that section but there's nowhere to find time there you know it's, it's better to find time on some of the other sections some of the flowing corners where you can progressively get on the power very quickly rather than in those very very slow corners where it's always a bit of a nightmare you know you, you're more than likely just to spin out just to find that extra mile an hour it's just not worth it again you know the tires are changing a lot under you uh, so you are constantly adapting to, whoa, the tyre's not gripping as well this lap as it was before. Again, I wasn't taking that as comfortably as I would like. But this is all learning though. I mean, every single lap is learning. You, you, I'm finding new ways of trying new techniques, even while I'm racing here. So lap 20, just eight laps to go. So we can see the tyres are wearing down now, these hard tyres. Much quicker than I expected, actually. I thought they'd last at least three or four laps longer than the options, but they seem to be lasting about the same amount of time on this race. I'm aware of that might... Whoa, I can feel that the grip is going from them. Something terrible. These, 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 these hard tyres have not worked for me at all. Uh... I must be blistery. Um, so the tyre's definitely wearing for me. And I'm thinking, really, I just want to get back to pits and get them off now. I've had them on for six laps. I really do just want to change back to the options. I've managed to keep within a range of the cars in front somewhere. There, one there is about five seconds ahead, something like that. And so I'm really just trying to sort of hang in there because then once I have enough fuel that I can do a much higher run, maximum fuel option tyres and really close that gap, potentially work my way up the grid a bit higher. the sunlight they're really getting in your way now making it much more difficult in these sections so round into the pits let's get back onto the option tire and get on the open road and disaster 
they've put the prime tyre back on my car. Exit, now, exit. as I understood it, I'd selected option earlier in the race, but obviously we've gone to prime on this particular change. Um, but this, the, even though I've already run the prime, the pit just defaulted as prime. I'm like, oh my god, I'm not going to run the whole race again now. Uh, that's basically cost me the race win. So my whole strategy that I worked towards uh, isn't going to happen now, which is a little bit frustrating. I thought that, uh, that obviously if you've done, you know, why would the pit default and give you the slower tyre when you've already run it? It really seems a bit strange. However, this can happen in Formula 1 often, uh, mistakes between teams and drivers, so you just have to accept it and continue the race. So I'm like, oh blimey, you know, here we are, 21 laps into the race, and uh, I'm sitting now in, where am I, third place, seventh place now, uh, and I'm thinking, well, I'm not going to go up to max fuel now, I might as well just finish with the... Uh, with what I've got and just try and put in some good laps and see where we end up because anything can happen in Formula 1 as Murray always said and it usually does so taking it around these final few laps now um, got another is that another back runner up ahead or oh, it's actually a race competitor there so I'm thinking well I'm trying to get my tyres up to temperature so I'm, even though I'm racing that guy I know that also that I need to just take care of my tyres and get them up to temperature it's a constant thinking process, isn't there, going on? You know, you're not just racing as hard as you can. You're always thinking about, you know, progressively accelerating into every corner and protecting your tyres and analysing your grip. It's not like playing just a normal arcade game. There's always a lot to think about. So he's popped in the pits then. That's moved me up to sixth place. That was Algaswari. And... Uh, I'm thinking, right, that's okay, let's just keep on putting in the laps, doing the best I can. That, that's a tricky corner, actually, that right-hander, because you're never fully on the power. You're always getting more and more on the power as it's opening out, but actually it's a very tricky couple of corners. Around here as well, it's much slower than you'd like, and then down in the first, getting in there. It's such a slow corner, but, you know, just it's not a corner where there's time to be gained. You, if you try and gain time on that corner, you're just going to lose just going to spin out there is there is no no real you know grip in that corner at all and there's lots and lots of marbles on the track now as well so you have to be aware that if you do go off the racing line that those are quickly going to reduce your grip so using the rest of my curves here am i not yet let's have a bit of it for the end of the lap a little bit frustrated really because I, I really thought to myself you know this was going to up with that lead of five seconds at the start and maintaining that lead through the first two pit stops it was looking really good and then obviously we've had the prime tyre which has been so terrible for me it's cost me track position down to third place and now prime tyre again and I'm down to fifth place already so I have made another position but it's not enough at this stage to uh, to uh, move me up all the way I really would need uh, an incident. I've, I've made a mistake there now. That was actually a little bit of confusion with the sunlight coming in there. And it just shows, you know, with just, just putting me off on the corner, I got slightly mixed up with which corner I was on. A little bit frustrated, actually, that I've done this race again for the, the, uh, the fourth time. Uh, what was nice about the full race distance is obviously it does change to nighttime setting. I do like the subtle change. I think it's really nice that they've included it. It'd be nice actually if they had a, an option to speed up the day, time of day change so that in a race like this you actually did get to see a little bit of night in this as well. But we don't quite make it there. We make it to late evening. It's a nice sort of subtle time of day change because the developers have been over there recently as well checking out the Abu Dhabi circuit. What a fantastic layout it is it's just a shame at the moment that it hasn't created any real atmosphere a center for the rich the bold and the beautiful of formula one the new monaco but it's certainly an amazing an olympic style complex as i would call it it's on that scale so again consistency now you really can't do too much, you know, you, you, you can push a little bit harder, but these tyres, you know, they're one and a half seconds a lap slower, at least, than the option tyre, so my lap times really aren't going to be relative. 
If I was actually pushing though, I'd be considerably quicker in the time trial. I should probably do a little time trial just to see what I can get out on that. But Weber there for 136. I mean, he's obviously on the option tyre. You cannot do that on this harder tyre. It's considerably slower. And of course the weight has come down as well. My, my best option laps were actually with heavy fuel. So with light fuel and the option tyre, I'd be going maybe maybe three seconds, four seconds a lap quicker now. Made a mistake there, that was nearly disaster. Again, I was concentrating on something else there. 24 of 28, uh, it's not, not long to go now. This has been another epic commentary for you guys today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been the most boring race in the world. So I thought I'd have a few, you know, add a few of my jovial chit chats. Looking forward to Brazil. Actually, I'm going to be in an event, uh, an F1 gathering, and I'll be filming that and getting lots of opinions of F1 fans through the season, so you can look forward to a video as well as a Brazilian GP on here from me, uh, and the feedback from the F1, we'll be getting feedback from F1 fans and lots of other stuff as well, so there'll be an event taking place, and I'll be uh, at that. Uh, and then maybe, you know, if that's good fun, then perhaps we can do some stuff for VVV next year, if you guys are interested, uh, perhaps if I can set up a meetup in London again. Uh, then uh, we can have regular Grand Prix meets, especially if it's on Sky TV and you don't have Sky TV, then that's an ideal opportunity to uh, set up an F1 meet, get loads of F1 fans together and uh, chew the fat, as it were. And I can interview a few of you guys and get your opinions as well on the sport, where it's going. Next year looks to be another exciting year. Lots of politics. It is a shame that the Austin, Texas race sounds like it's not going to be happening now. Again, politics and nonsense. Uh, it does seem a strange one. Uh, promises made by some of the guys in the US and they've not come through on it. Uh, like a little bit more control. And if there's one person you don't hold over a barrel, it's Bernie Eccleston. Because uh, when it comes to business, he'll find it anywhere. And if they're not going to be paying the money as they should be or whatever, can't get their credit note, then it looks like the Austin GP won't be happening. And we'll know that for certain in the next three weeks. Either way, I think it would be a great shame because the circuit's under construction, looks very impressive and would have been a nice location to visit. You know, I've heard good things about it, I've never been there, but alas, I was hoping to go there myself next year, but alas, uh, doesn't look like it will be the case now. You know, this is the last time you really want to make uh, an error now, you're 25 laps into the race does use a lot of concentration. I, I, I've, as I say, driven uh, over 100 laps now, so I'm a little bit tired at this point. But I thought, no, continue on. Nice and consistent. These tyres were awful. Just no grip at all. The car was sliding about. The faster I was trying to go, the slower it would make me go. It just sent me wide every time I tried to go fast on them. So, working my way around these last few corners. And this is one of those races, isn't it, where you've gone out, you've raced round and round and round, you've not made any significant errors, and yet, and you've not seen anyone, you've not been overtaken by anyone, and yet you've ended up in fourth place because it all happened in the pits. How boring some races must be for the drivers. More like a testing session than actual races. As I say, uh, I ran this race and then thought, oh, you know, if I had time, I'd run another one that might be a bit more exciting. But instead... Uh, I thought, hey, this is Abu Dhabi, this is a circuit, this is F1, some races are exciting and some are boring as, well, as anything really. Uh, I, I got stuck behind the back running there and lost bags of time and that really for me was the kibosh then. Oh, no, I'm not going to catch anyone now. I was still hoping at that point that I could uh, make up the ground. So I got out my way there so I could get down the straight. Breaking. I've missed actually when I've been using the DRS as well. I have been using the DRS on occasion when the option provides itself. There's only one DRS section on the game, this is two in real life. But uh come around these last few corners. Lap 26 of 28. And rather appropriately, Lewis Hamilton is actually leading at the moment as well. So a good race from Lewis on the game as well. Peerless, in fact, from him. 
very quick lap times he's been putting in. I worked my round these last few corners. I was kind of hoping at this point that the, the light would just dip a little bit more and we get to a little bit of the darkness, but you do need to run a full race for it to dip into the nighttime mode, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, and it does come up very bright on my camera on the TV as well. That's despite the brightness of the TV being turned down. It's actually a little bit duller than it looks just to record these videos, but the camera is simply not very good at it. I will sort out new cameras eventually. All on the to-do list. Tyres are fading now, quite a bit. You can see there by my tentative hairpin. Trying to get on the power. If you come around this, just a lap and a half to go. So much like the real Abu Dhabi race, it's been a race of a uh, couple of incidents, but on the whole, it's been a pretty sedate affair. Everybody's spread out quite a bit and uh, the circuit isn't really doing it. I'd love to know what could be done to improve that situation because the facility is absolutely fantastic. And what it is about certain circuits, such as this and Valencia, where the racing just doesn't seem to materialize. It just doesn't seem to work. And I'd love to know why. Because on the whole it has some nice technical flowing corners but it is very technical and maybe it's the same to do with the style of circuit that it is not many high speed corners on the circuit as well they're all low speed corners generally so if we're going to have to get past these guys i'm not I'm not going to do anything stupid at this stage i'm like oh well if they're not moving over i'll just hang behind them if i use a little bit of curse here oh no not there so I'm on the inside off line, that sent me a little bit wide because just on the uh, marbles, but whatever, we've only got a lap or so to go and I know that I'm maintaining fourth position and won't make, be able to make a change for that now. That's a little bit disappointing on the whole, I've not made any mistakes, but it's simply that, that tyre issue and as I say, uh, if I made a mistake, it was not informing the pits, I wanted options for the uh, pit stop, which would have made, put me in perfect track position to have won this race. But I like that, I like the difficulty, you know, if you want to win a Grand Prix, or not all the races, the AI can vary from race to race, obviously, as many of you will know, but some of them are really hard and some of them are a lot easier. But if you make mistakes and you're not consistent, you will pay the penalty, and on this occasion, it's put me down to fourth place, so just off the podium. So coming around then, final few corners, Lewis Hamilton crossed the finishing line. You can see how far ahead of me he was, I mean, miles ahead. And when you think, you know, I kept the gap to Lewis Hamilton pegged, at, you know, three to five seconds for half the race. And then just, I went onto the primes and he just shows I was losing three, four seconds a lap. So all this time was lost just on these tires, which was really frustrating. It just shows the, the difference in the tires. You can't really make any difference up yourself and how hard you drive this car it won't make it but viewers that's it for another f1 2011 grand prix i hope you've enjoyed this 50 percent race do let me know if you'd like to see more and uh, i'll be back with lots on f1 lots of other racing games as well real soon but that's it for now viewers more soon